Hello, Hosam. Can you hear me? Hello? Please say something. Hello? Say something. You are speaking, but... Uh, you are speaking, but... Uh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can hear me, please. If you can hear me, please raise your hand. Hello, hello, Dr. Ho Sam. Are you here? Can you uh, open your cam, please? Can you unmute and open your cam, please, Ho Sam? Hello, Ho Sam. Hello, Dr. Ho Sam. Can you hear me? Can you hear me clearly? 
we couldn't hear you. I see you are speaking, but How about now? Is that better? Okay, 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 it's okay now. Dr. Ho Sam. Okay, okay, okay. good, good, good. good. Okay. Uh, so before okay, you perfect. your presentation, I'm going to uh, introduce you to the participant today. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Ho Sam and participants. Welcome to the Viti Show International Convention 2020. On behalf of the, the organizing committee, we would like to thank you so much for your participation and contribution to our convention success. I am Quinn, the moderator of this session today. I'm delighted to see you here uh, in this session, and I do hope that all of you will be able to have uh, some valuable knowledge and experience as takeaways following uh, his talk. Before the presentation, there are a few considerations. In case you have any questions or concerns about the presentation, please feel free to ask Dr. Hossum uh, in about from five to 10 minutes. Uh, so we have about five to 10 minutes for Q&A session. Uh, we warmly welcome Mr. Hossum um, Elmi Teher in this session, which is entitled Introducing a New Vocabulary Based English Language Test. About our presenter, Dr. Ho Sam Elmi Teher received a master degree in curriculum studies from Hawaii University and a PhD in applied linguistics from Hiroshima University. He's a full time English language lecturer at Nanzan University. Dr. Hosam current research interests are vocabulary knowledge, acquisition, development, and assessment, active learning, and language testing. Please welcome Dr. Hosam El Mitterhan. Thank you very much for the introduction, and I hope everyone can hear me now. Um, is my voice clear for everyone? Can everyone hear my voice? Is is my voice clear? Just show me with your hand if, if my voice is clear. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, um, good afternoon from here. Actually, good evening from here. It's uh, 5.30 in Japan now, 5.30 p.m. I think we are two hours ahead of Vietnam. And um, I'm working here as an English language lecturer at Nanzan University. It's a, it's a university in Aichi in Japan. And today I'm going to be talking about a new vocabulary um, language test. Uh, it's my first time to use this software, so I hopefully I can use it in the right way. Um, I'm supposed now to share my PowerPoint, so I hope I can successfully do that. Um, just give me a second. Um, I think that's how it's supposed to do. Okay, sharing, sharing this up. And just one minute, I'm trying to share the PowerPoint. Um, okay. Okay. Can you can you see my my PowerPoint? Can everyone see my PowerPoint? Yes. Oh. Okay. Not sure. Um, 
I can't see you now, so if, if possible, can you please just uh, let me know if you can see my PowerPoint now. I'm, I'm assuming everyone can see now. Is that correct? Can you see it? Uh, okay, I'm already sharing the full screen. So is my PowerPoint clear or not clear? Oh. Can you see my PowerPoint? Okay, okay, perfect. So um, I'm going to be talking about this vocabulary test, and also there are some questions in the vocabulary test. I hope you can help me to answer those questions. Um, also, uh, in case if you have any questions during my presentation, feel free to, to stop me and ask me any questions so before I go to the next slide and also before you forget as well. So uh, I'm going to be talking about um, a new vocabulary based English language test. Uh, before I start, I would like first to say why why did I do that? So the motivation behind this study, actually there was a call from the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology um, to, for measures that's multifaceted multi and objective. Uh, multifaceted here means uh, tests that test more than one aspect, um, general tests that has more than one aspect, and objective here means well, tests that can show an accurate or valid result. So the, the Japanese Ministry of Education now is focusing on new teaching or new tests that are valid, that can show um, clear results, and also that has multiple aspects um, tests as well. So that's a kind of a focus uh, for the current days for the Japanese Ministry of Education. So based on that, um, I was working on designing um, a receptive vocabulary test. And uh, what's receptive? Receptive means the vocabulary we need for listening and reading and vocabulary tests. So my focus is on the vocabulary that we need for listening and reading. And that's what we called receptive vocabulary. So um, before I talk about the new test, I would like first to talk about two um, popular receptive vocabulary tests, and then I'm going to explain why did I do the new tests. So the two popular vocabulary, receptive vocabulary tests are the first one called XYLEX, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, this vocabulary test would uh, give you this screen and will show you one word, as you can see here, the word is fields, and you will have to click either smiley face if you know this word or a sad face if you don't know this word. So the test would show you 120 words. And if you know the word, you will have to click on smile face. If you don't know the word, you have to click on the sad face. And this test actually um, has been cited in so many research papers. And I listed here some of them. Uh, lots of researchers have been using the software. Um, but this software also, as you can see here, it says 1K, 2K, 3K. So it tests actually the first 10,000 words. I mean, the first 10 most frequent thousand words. And it will show you some words that's not actually true. So like a fake words, a words with wrong spelling mistakes. And why they show you those words? Because they want to be sure you are not just clicking on smile face or sad face all the time, but you actually know the word. So, for example, here, do you see this error, the black color here? This means that that particular tickers have clicked on some words, and he said he knows them, although they are fake words, they're not real words, and that the error would go up. So, this is one of the really popular voc receptive vocabulary tests, and that's called XYLEX. And this is the screen as you can see it, and it has been used in many research papers to estimate or to understand the the receptive vocabulary knowledge size. So how many words do you know uh, in terms of listening and reading? It's it's free software and it's available online for people who would like to use it. The second one or the second very popular test, uh, it's called VLT. And before I talk about this is how the test looks. So it will give you some words, uh, six words and only three definitions. 
and it would ask you to find the words that match those definitions. So for example, look here, um, it says uh, business, clock, horse, pencil, show, and wall, and give you three definitions. And if matching them, well, wall will be part of a house. Uh, horse will be animal with four legs, and pencil will be something used for writing. So this is another receptive vocabulary test. It's not it's not on the computer, it's paper paste test. And that's how you can also estimate how many, the size of the receptive vocabulary words. And as you can see here, also this test has been cited in so many papers. So it's also one of the really popular tests. And the VLT stands for vocabulary level tests. And this test assume or argue to be measure um, the 1,000 most frequent word, the 2,000, 3,000 academic vocabulary, 5,000 and 10,000. So it 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 goes um, and it give you 150 words. So the number of question or number of words is 150. Again, this is also one of the really popular uh, receptive vocabulary tests. However, if you if you look at these two tests, again you're gonna find one main issue in those tests. Most tests actually measure a single aspect of receptive vocabulary knowledge. So for example, the, the first test, I'm gonna go back and show you one more. This test would only measure the word form. Do you recognize, do you know how the word spelled or the spelling of a specific word? The second one will only test the meaning of the word. So as you can see, although these two receptive vocabulary tests are so popular, every test of them only test one aspect, one side of receptive vocabulary. This one would test the meaning of the word, and this one would test the form or how the word looks like. So that's one of the main issue in those uh, popular uh, receptive vocabulary tests. And that's why I start to thinking about how to create another test that would measure more than one aspect. And again, why did I do that? If you go back here to the Ministry of Education in Japan, they were looking for multifaceted. Multifaceted again means one test that can test more than one aspect of the receptive vocabulary knowledge. So moving forward, um, I got them what I called multifaceted receptive vocabulary test or MIRVET or some people called MISTERVET. Um, this test, um, as I said, it's multifaceted, so it's more than one aspect or more than one side. It also measures receptive vocabulary. Again, this is the vocabulary we use in listening and reading. So what's MERVIT? Oh, MERVIT contains 60 multiple choice integrated skills. So the test contains of 60 multiple choice questions, and it's divided into three parts, part A, part B, and part C. And it covers three word aspects. So it covers the recognition of word use, word form, and word usage. And I'm going to be talking about each part of the test um, soon uh, with more details. But for now, I need to say that it's 60 questions and three parts and covers three different aspects of word knowledge, receptive word, um, receptive vocabulary knowledge. Um, all the test questions and answer are within the most, the first or um, the most, the 5,000 most frequent words, according to just at 8,000. Um, the test target um, lower English proficiency level and why, why the test was designed for lower level English proficiency learners, because, well, this is the majority of Japanese university students. So the majority of Japanese university students are within the level of beginner to pre-intermediate, according to, to many researchers. So that's why the test was mainly designed for this specific proficiency level from pre-intermediate, I mean, from beginner to pre-intermediate. Um, again, the, a full test or um, the test would require about 30 minutes to complete and it can be processed by the class teacher. And today also, I'm gonna give you some examples of this test questions. I'm gonna ask you to answer them and let's see how this is gonna work. So let's go first with part A of the test. But before we do that, sorry, uh, this is just a summary of how the test looks like. So again, the test contains of three parts, A, B, C, and the first part called word use, and it contains 14 questions. The second part is, part is word form, that's 30 questions, then word usage and 16 questions. Total 60, you have 30 minutes to finish, that's about 30 seconds for each question. And it's paper pencil test. So you have, well, you answer with paper and pencils, not computerized. And 
test takers can listen to the audio several times. So it's not like the other tests when you listen to the audio only one time and all, but it doesn't matter how many times you listen to the audio, but you have to finish the test within the assigned time of 30 minutes. So now let's talk about each part of the test. So part A, or what we call word use. What's part A of the test? Uh, part A of the test measure the test taker's ability to recognize word use in a written contest with semantic appropriateness and grammatical accuracy. So here we are talking about can the test taker recognize words with, with correct meaning and correct grammar? So not producing them, but recognizing them in a contest. So can you recognize a word with appropriate meaning and appropriate grammar accuracy? And part A has 14 questions, and you would basically listen to a first sentence of a short conversation, and you need to complete the conversation with the second sentence. And I'm going to show you an example in shortly. So, for example, in the audio, you may listen to a woman say, what is the time now? You will only listen to this sentence, what is the time now? And then you will see a man saying something and then, but I guess it's 1130. So you need, you need here to complete the sentence. What did the man say before, but I guess it's 1130. So you're going to have those choices, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. You need to choose from each one of those to complete what did the man say in response to that woman's question. So what is the time now? Again, you will not see the woman question. You only listen to it. And then, so the answer here would be like this. The man might say, unfortunately, I don't have a watch, but I guess it's 1130. So the correct answer would be A, B, B, A, A. Again, A, B, B, A, A, which is in the red color. Unfortunately, I don't have a watch, but I guess it's 1130. So that's part A. Here we are looking at the meaning and the grammar. Well, if the student or if the test takers can recognize the meaning of each word and if can recognize the grammar, the correct grammar form of each one, then the test taker would be able to complete the sentence correctly. So now I would like to, to give you a try. I would like you to practice. So I have some questions. You're going to listen to the audio, and I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to think about the answer and try to choose the correct answer. Again, now I'm talking about part A still in, in the test, and that contains of 14 questions, but I'm not going to give you 14 questions, just only five questions to get the feeling or to get the sense of the test. So, Here's the first question. Uh, you're going to listen to a man. The man would say something, and then this is the woman answer. Are you kidding? I had this slip last night. I, and then you need to complete what comes after I. Again, you need to choose either A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. So you don't have to write the word. You only need to write either A or B, A or B, A or B. So I'm going to just try the first one. I'm going to play the audio. Um, I'm going to play the audio two times. And then at the same time, please go ahead and choose either A, B, A, B, A, B. Again, you're going to listen to the man talking, and this is the woman answer to the man talks. So here, here we go. Here the man talk. Let's just pretend that we did a good job on the test yesterday. One more time. Let's just pretend that we did a good job on the test yesterday. I cannot see on the camera now because I have the full screen. I can only see the PowerPoint. So I'm not sure if, if you could hear the sound. Um, but if someone can can text me and tell me if, if the sound is clear or just use the microphone and tell me if the sound is clear. Can you hear the sound? Oh, I mean, the the speaker. So, okay, okay, good. So that, that means you can, okay, perfect. Okay, so um, the first question, um, again, I'm going to play the audio one more time here. So it says, 
Let's just pretend that we did a good job on the test yesterday. Let's just pretend that we did a good job on the test yesterday. So this is what the man said. Let's just pretend that we did a good job on the test yesterday. So what the woman answered? She said, are you kidding? I hardly slept last, last night. I... Let's just pretend that we... I can't stop thinking about it. So that means A, A, B, A, and then B. I can't stop thinking about it. This taker or student would, would be really difficult for them to give this correct answer if they don't know the meaning of each word and if they don't know the correct grammar of each word. Not only that, but also can understand the audio in the same time. So it's integrated questions. It includes listening, it includes grammar, and includes meaning or the uh, semantic, um, so the meaning of each word or the definition of each word. But not to produce them. Again, student will not produce the words. Student would recognize or would see the words. And that's why we call it receptive listening and uh, reading. So if your answer is A, A, B, A, B, then it's correct. If your answer is something else, then probably it's not correct. Let's go to the second question. Let's just pretend. Second question, there is no hint in the second question. So the second question, just going to hear one part of the conversation and you need to complete the whole answer. There is no hint. So some question has hints, some question, ah, some question have hints, some question doesn't, don't have. So here, the second question, listen. What did you think of John's final exam score? I'm going to play it one more time and then give you a few seconds to try to write down the correct answer. What did you think of John's final exam score? So I'm giving you a few seconds to think about the correct answer. Okay, right, so the audio says, or the man said, What did you think of John's final exam score? What did you think about, or what did you think of John's final exam score? What do you think about John's final exam score? How, how's his final exam score? And here the answer would be, No one else could have done better. And this is kind of... Um, uh, how to say, it's kind of a cultural expression, or it's not a direct meaning. So here, no one else could have done better, which means he, he did the best, or he was the best in the class. So he had the best score. So no one else could have done better. So the answer would be A, B, B, A, B, as you can see in the red color here, A, B, B, A, B. So again, we are looking at um, Grammar, we're looking at meaning of each word. We're also looking at the listening skills of specific words so they can answer the questions in a correct way. Uh, I have five questions in total, so I'm going to move to the third question. What did you think of? Okay. Again, the third question doesn't have any hint. You're going to listen to the first part and then you would need to answer. So I'm going to play the audio for you and please think about the answer. Do you think I should still submit my paper? The deadline was yesterday, you know. Okay. Uh, remember, students or test takers can listen to the audio several times, but the whole test has to finish within 30 minutes. So if they really keep repeating the same question several, several, several times, they will miss the rest of the questions because remember, they have only 30 seconds to answer each one. So repeating the audio wouldn't really be a good advantage for them, but they can do if they have time at the end of the test. So I'm going to play the audio one more time. Do you think I should still submit my paper? The deadline was yesterday, you know. Okay, think about the answer.
One more time, that would do. Do you think I should still submit my paper? The deadline was yesterday, you know. Okay. Hopefully you could get the correct answer, but just in case one more time. Do you think I should still submit my paper? The deadline was yesterday, you know. Okay, so the man here said, do you think I still, do you think I should still submit my paper? The deadline was yesterday, you know. So he's asking, uh, the deadline was yesterday. Uh, should I give my paper? Should I submit my paper to the teacher? The deadline passed already. The deadline was yesterday. So that's his question for, for, the, uh, for the one he talks to. And in this case, the correct answer would be, Do you well, better late than never. Better late than never. So it's, it's better. It's okay to be late than never submit. And in that case, the correct answer would be B-A-A-B. B A A P. So again, here at the stakers need to understand the words, need to understand the phrase, need to understand the um, grammar, and also need to understand the audio itself. So again, as I mentioned, it's integrated. It's more than one skill in the same time, but all the skills are receptive. And this is why I said part A would, would measure the test taker ability to recognize or to understand or to find a word meaning and grammar. So mainly it's based on the meaning of the word and the correct grammar form of the word. Now, question four. Do you? Okay, in this one, we have a hint here and the man said something, the woman said, why not? And then you have to choose A, B, A, B, A, B. I'm gonna play the audio for the man and then think about the woman answer. It is going to be sunny tomorrow. One more time. It is going to be sunny tomorrow. Think about the answer. One more time, that would you. It is going to be sunny tomorrow. I'm giving you a few seconds to think about the correct answer. Okay, so here, here the man said, it is going to be sunny tomorrow. It is going to be sunny tomorrow. So the woman answered is, why not? and then she said something and the correct answer in this case would be why not we go for hiking then why not we go for hiking then and now the correct would be a a b b a so a a b b and then a um the last question, question number five, again, part A contains 14 questions, one four, but I'm giving you only five questions just to experience the test, how, how it looks like and how the student would probably react to the test. Um, question number five. It is the last one for part A. The woman said something and then the man said, calm down a minute, calm down a minute, and then you need to complete the man's answer. So I'm going to play the woman's audio or the woman's sentence or question. Did you see my bracelet? I can't find it. I'm going to play one more time. Did you see my bracelet? I can't find it. My 
to think about the answer. What did the man say? Calm down a minute, and then what? I'm playing the audio one more time. Did you see my bracelet? I can't find it. Okay. So the, the woman said, did you see my bracelet? I can't find it. Did you see my bracelet? I can't find it. And then the man answered this, well, come down a minute. And he would say, did you ask her around? Did you ask her around? So in this case, the correct answer would be B A A A. B A A A. So for the last five questions, if you could answer them right or could couldn't answer them, that's how the student would do in the actual classroom. So when I did this test with my students, um, well, lots of them would have some mistakes in, in part A of the test. And many of them would repeat the audio several times. Again, because that is this is kind of integrated skills, more than one skill in the same time, and also it measured their kind of their listening skill, kind of their, uh, their how they recognize the word meaning and the word grammar. Um, now we're gonna move to part B of the test. So in part A, remember, meaning and grammar. Part B of the test measured the word form. Can they recognize the word form? And the word form means, do they know the correct spelling of the word? And in this um, part, this part contains of 30 questions, and um, the student would see a conversation or passage, and each conversation is missing 10 words, and they would have to choose from a different words or for different um, matrix of words to complete the passage. So for example, this is an example here on the screen. So they can see that they can see the text and also they can hear the full full conversation or full um, full text and then they would have to choose from the correct answer either a b or c and as you can see it's the same word but in different forms and basically only one is correct the other two probably are not correct they are not actually words so they are looking for here for the spelling uh, it can be, can they recognize the word form? Do they know the correct form of the word? And all those words are mainly from the 2K and 3K. I mean, the most frequent, the second and third thousand of most frequent words. Um, one thing here is why I need the audio. Well, because sometimes students can answer without listening, but sometimes when they don't actually know uh, which one to choose, then they would listen and the listening would help them to choose the correct uh, word. In some cases, it would help them. So let me give you an example, an actual example from the test. So here, well, for this one, the correct answer would be C, A, but let's move to the actual question. So this one is, um, again, as I mentioned, they would have 30 questions in part B, but those, and that means three passages or three conversation. Each one is missing 10 words. So the total would be 30. And an example, this one here, um, I'm gonna play the audio, which you're gonna listen to the whole thing. But first, those are the 10 words and you need to choose each one, is it A, B, or C for each one of the 10 words. Think about your choices and at the same time, I'm gonna play the audio for you. Mr. Nakamura's family is arranging a relaxing trip to Hawaii, an American island in the Pacific Ocean. They rented a, they rented a hotel room on the beach in Honolulu. The kids, the kids wanted to go on a submarine to see the deep sea lion. They like to look at dolphins and angelfish. Mrs. Nakamura wants to go shopping and take a tour at the historical and industrial places. Mr. Nakamura doesn't like noise, so he will go for mountain climbing all day. He suspects that the temperature will be just perfect. All the family will then get together to watch a comedy movie in the evening, which might be followed by a tasty dinner. Does this sound like a good plan for the vacation? As you can see here, the, the, the passage or the conversation, which in part B, it consists of, again, the most or the first 5,000 words of English or the most frequent 5,000 words of English. So it doesn't really have 
advanced words or really difficult words. I mean, an average um, high proficiency level, I mean, an average proficiency level would understand most of the words. So here, uh, look at the passage and look at the 10 questions and try to choose which is the correct word for each missing word. I'm going to give you a few seconds um, to think about that and try to choose the correct answers. In part B, some students don't even play the audio, but some, well, most of them actually play it. Uh, so in case they probably don't recognize the correct form, the audio might help. But I have seen some students who never played the audio for part B. So think about the correct answer for part B. Okay, so here are the correct answers. I just um, deleted the not correct answer and I kept the correct ones. So um, this part of the test, usually um, we will see later how the student did in this part or what the student scores in this part. But this is the correct answer <clears throat> for part B, which again measured the word form or the correct spelling of the word. And those words, um, the missing words, are among the most two to three thousand frequent, two thousand and two three thousand frequent words in English. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, right, the next part C, and this is the last part of the test. Part C, I called it word usage, and here, this is the most difficult part of the test. Why? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> It's the most difficult part of the test because this part students would have to recognize words in a spoken contest and those words they have to recognize the meaning and the grammar um the grammar structure of those particular words so let me give you an example to understand but before I do that i want to tell you this part contains 16 questions and in this part students would listen to four sentences only listen to four sentences they cannot see them and then there are going to be some questions about those four sentences so for example in the audio uh students may hear or test takers may hear something like a man is riding a horse a little boy is playing with a horse a woman is training a horse men are buying a horse they cannot see those four sentences they only can listen to them but look at the question. Which sentence contains a past tense verb? Which sentence contains a past tense verb? Again, they cannot see the sentences. Which sentence contains a plural verb? Which sentence contains a female subject? Which sentence contains an adjective? So as you can tell, this part is quite hard for the student because they need to recognize in a spoken contest the meaning of the words and also the grammar or the structure of each word or the grammar format of each word. So for this one, the answer would be, well, they can also choose NA, which means not applicable, if they feel there is no answer for this question. So they can either choose A, B, C, D, sentence A, or B, or C, or D, or NA means this answer is not there. So for example, number one, which sentence contain a past tense verb? Well, there is no past tense verb in the four sentences, so it's NA. But the other three sentences, two, three, and four, they have answer D, C, and P. So let me give you examples of those questions and try to answer them, please. So here's an example. Again, as I mentioned, you cannot see the sentence, but you can only see the question. So listen to four sentences and try to answer the four questions. A, the man is repairing his computer. B, the man is filling out an application. C, the man is relaxing in the sunshine. 
D. The man is working on his personal PC. Now try to answer the four questions. You will recognize, you will see that this part is quite hard. It's not that easy because it really needs students who can listen carefully, students who understand grammar, students who understand the meaning of different words. Um, but again, I'm going to play the audio one more time. And please try to answer the questions. A. The man is repairing his computer. B. The man is filling out an application. C. The man is relaxing in the sunshine. D. The man is working on his personal PC. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the correct answers and the uh, transcript or script as well. Here. Look, number one would be B, number two, number two and three are not there, and number three would be D. So look at, for example, in the first one, which sentence contains a verb that's similar in meaning to, to complete a form? The answer would be B, because here the man is filling out an application, to so complete an application. Look at question number, number four, which sentence contain an adjective? That would be D, because the man is working on his personal PC, so personal here is an adjective. So, it's it's quite a little bit hard for students, but by time, actually, students get a good score on this part as well. Let's look at one more question. I'm going to play the audio, and please try to answer the four questions. A. They are lying on the decks. B. They are purchasing computers. C. They are office staff. D. They are police officers. Okay. Is it try to answer the four questions? I have seen some students who are listening and at the same time try to write every sentence, quickly try to write every sentence so they can answer the questions. That's also fine. As we'll add, they can finish the whole test within 30 minutes. I'm going to play the audio one more time. A. They are lying on the decks. B. They are purchasing computers. C. They are office staff. D. They are police officers. Okay, I'm going to show you the correct answers. Here the script and the correct answers. Oh, it says question three two times, but it's question four. So as you can see, also the sentences themselves are within the first five thousand words, so they don't contain really very advanced vocabulary words as well. Okay, I have two more questions. So the next one, this is the last part. Okay, listen and try to answer the four questions. A, they are faking a report. B, they are writing a report. C, they are examining a report. D, they are discarding a report. Try to answer the four questions. I'm going to play the audio one more time. A. Oh, go ahead. They are faking. Okay. Sorry, Omar. A. They are faking a report. B. They are writing a report. C. They are examining a report. D. They are discarding a report. Give me a few seconds to try to answer. Okay, carry the correct answers. A. I have one more question, but I'm going to skip it because of the time. 
So I'm gonna, um, it's it's similar to those questions. And remember part C of the test contains of 16 questions. So that means um, four by four. So four, 16 sentences and 16 questions. All right, I'm gonna skip the next one. And um, now I'm gonna talk about the test validity. Is, is this test valid? Is this test valid or no? This was the main question and here, According to nation, law for a nation, one kind of evidence for the validity of the test is to see if this can, uh, distinguishes among different levels of language proficiency. So if we give this test to different groups, every group has different proficiency level, the test would show that. The test would tell me that this group is beginner, this is intermediate, or this is advanced. If the test can do that, then a the test is a valid test. So I, I have that in mind. and. I had three groups of students. One group is beginner, one is pre-intermediate, and one is intermediate. How do I know that? Because they had a placement test in the university, and the university has placed them into three different levels. So I know that each group is already placed in a certain level. So I have three different groups with three different proficiency level, and I give them the test. So a total was 75 undergraduate students. Each group was 25 students. And all of them were 18 years old. They were all the first year at the university. And as I said, there were three different groups, beginner, pre-intermediate, intermediate. Each one is 25 um, students. So within a week, within their first week at the university, each group take the test um, individually. So each group had explained the same test. The same test has been given to the three groups. And um, when I give the test, when I give the test scores, uh, when I was checking the test, because each part of the test has a different scores. For example, part A is 14, part B is 30, part C is 16, total 60. So every part has different number or different maximum score. I turn it the scores into percentage. So for example, here in part A, if students score seven correct answers out of 14 questions, I multiply by 100, then his score will be 50. So 50 means this student answers seven question correct. So I, I get the scores in percentages just because each part has a different maximum score. So this is what I found out. So for intermediate and then pre-intermediate beginners, and they were all um, significant scores. So. For part A, as you can see here, each part of the test, uh, higher level score more than lower level. So for intermediate, the score was higher in part A, part B, part C, and total. Pre-intermediate was lower than intermediate, but higher than beginner, and beginner was the lowest. So basically, the test could significantly uh, show differences between the three different proficiency groups, which shows me at some point that this test has we can argue, or I can argue that this is a valid one. But putting them together, looking at the three parts here, the student in part B, the three different proficiency groups scored higher in part B than part A and part C. And well, part C was the most difficult because scores was lower than the other two parts, but part B here was the highest. And that actually makes a lot of sense. Because again, according to research, according to lots of papers, that vocabulary tests that test the word form or test the, um, the word form, like spelling, the word spelling, would actually get higher score than any other test, especially with lower level proficiency um, levels participants. So that's why part B was higher score than part A and part, and part C. Um, well, I'm going to summarize, so I'm going to give you some time if you have questions. So just as a conclusion, uh, this test would, would give me a multiple aspects. It would measure multiple aspects of receptive vocabulary knowledge, not just one aspect. And it shows to be a valid one. And this is, should help actually um, lots of students and a lot of teachers as well. Um, I'm now working on different versions of the test. So let's assume that a teacher would have three or five versions of this test and he would give the test for his student every month or every two months. Then that way, a, a teacher would have a really clear picture of the student English development um, or English receptive vocabulary development over time. And that's actually what I'm working on right now. So also, hopefully, by the time 
um, the average score, for example, let's say a student would take three tests over one year or five tests over one year. The average score of those five tests would actually work better later on, uh, better than entrance or placement exam in the university. I mean, assuming that student would take those tests in high school. Um, however, some limitations for the study. Well, all my participants were, were Japanese. I didn't try that with participants of different nationalities. Um, also, I had all my participants within um, lower level. So they were um, beginner to pre-intermediate. So of course, later on, trying the test with higher levels or different L1s would, would also give a clear picture for the study. Those are some of my references, not all of them, of course. And I'm gonna, this is my name over there and my email address. So we having about 10 minutes or something. So if you have any question, I'll be try to answer them. So I'm gonna close this and then any questions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hosam, for your presentation. And um, we are happy to receive any questions from the audience for our presenter. It seems like no no questions for me. So, in case if you if you have questions later or get, did I get something here? I'm not really good at this um, software. So if if you are texting something, can't really see it. Okay. Uh, well, in case if if you if you feel you have, oh. Okay. Uh, if you feel you have questions. Okay, do you have questions? How about your... Okay, please. All right, so I, want ha I, I have one question for you. So how can we... Yes, assess? please. How can we get access to your tabs? You mentioned tabs. Oh, you mean how to get an access to the tests? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, as I mentioned, I'm now working on... on um, the four more versions of the test and the five versions should be available, I think, within the next few months. Uh, if you email me later on, I would actually give you um, an access to them or a link of how to find them. So now I'm, I'm still working on four more versions of the test and they're going to be complete within a few months. So again, my email is there uh, in case you feel interested, you can email me and I will be happy to, to share with you. Um, some of those tests and um, here um, the email this is my name and this is my email address over there so uh, email me and when the full tests are complete I will give you um, an access to them All right, thank did you. I answer your questions yeah. if not please ask me again okay good thank you are there any other questions? There's, um, uh, there's a more question for you. So thank okay. you, Sam, for and thank you for the uh, contribution to International Convention 2020. And thank you and goodbye. And thank you very much. You. You thank you very much. Thank you for your help today too. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.